Well, good evening. Welcome. Merry Christmas. It's a joy to gather together both here in St. Andrew's Sanctuary in the parking lot. And uh, I know a number of people are on Zoom as well. So good to be able to join together as God's people in this celebration. For those of us here in the sanctuary, uh, we will be, uh, since the weather's cooperated, at least to some degree, um, following the communion portion of our service, we will be uh, recessing out. Um, and you are welcome to take a hand candle if, if you're brave. Uh, otherwise, with the wind out there, we have the, those glow sticks. Um, so we'll um, pick those up and uh, some music sheets. And uh, so we will be gathering again outside so we can sing. Because you know, what's Christmas Eve without singing Silent Night? at least. Um, I'll give you more directions about that the, at the right time. Again, it is a joy to gather together with you my first Christmas here at St. Andrew. Good to be celebrating it with you. Let us take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship.
Those who are able, please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people, with all who come to the manger, Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Grace and peace be with you on this most holy night. Through the love of God, our Father, the presence of his Son, Emmanuel, God with us. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, unite us in our hope for the future. And also with you. Let us continue with the Christmas dialogue. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders. You have, you have broken, broken as on the day of Midian. Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. Authority rests upon his shoulders. He is a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and for his kingdom. From this time forward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us join together in prayer. Almighty God, you have made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated.
We will continue with the, the Psalm, which is Psalms 96, and it will be spoken responsibly. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. The Lord be feared in all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are your statue. Power and splendor are your Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of the holy name. And offerings enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before all the Lord, all the earth. And let God of the nations, the Lord is king. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. And shall all the trees of the woods shout for joy in your coming, Lord. For you come out to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. And the second reading is from Paul's letter to Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce imp impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purity for himself, a people of his own, who are jealous, who are zealous for good deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Uh, speak together the Alleluia verse. Alleluia. Alleluia. I am I bringing you, you good news of great, great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 2. Glory to God. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. You is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And the angels had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be Grace and peace be with you on this most holy night. Through the power of the Holy Spirit from God our Father and from our soon-to-be-born Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke tells us that in those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. What a wonderful fantasy. Really, doesn't it make you just want to think that that is the way life should be, whether in Maine or not? Imagine one decree sent out, and apparently not just the Roman Empire, but all the world would be organized categorized and documented. 
all went to their own towns to be registered, Luke tells us. Apparently, not one person thought, well, no government's going to tell me where, what to do. I'm staying right here. I'd like to see the emperor try something like that in New England. Lily and our church secretary and I have been working on updating the St. Andrew database on members and friends for, oh, about two, three months now. We still have a long way to go. And that's with all the power of modern technology and about 150 people to register. Emperor Augustus declares that all the world should be registered. I wonder, was he that naive or was he that arrogant? Don't we all, at least at times, wish that life could be that simple? How many decrees have we made that next Christmas or next year, we will be organized and efficient ahead of the game. When we make those decrees, those declarations of turning our lives around and living by a higher standard, are we being naive? Arrogant? If we have made those decrees, perhaps time and time again, is there any indication that we can succeed? And if not, should we simply throw up our hands and stop any pretense of trying to improve? Give up trying to live in obedience to the way God would have us live and our own desire for peace and justice. Other than the balmy weather, of course, and it is 40 you know, some degrees here this afternoon, there is a reason we live in Maine, after all. We value the pace of life here, and we recognize that the frenzy and crowds of urban life is not the only way. But even here, however, where life is the way it ought to be. It is hard sometimes to live as we would want to. During my days as a hospital chaplain, I had any number of conversations with patients who confront this time of Christmas with sadness, frustration, even despair. Their illness perhaps preventing them from creating that perfect Christmas for themselves or their family. Their choices, sometimes over many years, leaving them with a string of broken and bitter relationships. The economy denying their wish to flood their loved ones with gifts or perhaps even just to put food on the table. The passage of time, bringing empty chairs around the table. How we might very well wonder, for many do ask just this question, how can we truly celebrate Christmas when the world my family, when my own life is so disordered, so chaotic. 
How can I truly be in the Christmas spirit when the last thing I feel is peace or joy or even simple happiness? Well, as is often the case for those seeking to live out our Christian faith on earth, Scripture can be a helpful guide at times. What were the preparations that the emperor of the known world took for the arrival of the long-awaited king? Well, as we've already discussed, Augustus was focused on organizing a database. He didn't even have God on his calendar, electronic or otherwise. Mary and Joseph's preparations for that first Christmas, relocation and house hunting, always a good choice when you're nine months pregnant. Shepherds, well, they were just going about business as usual, one day, just like the next. Now, granted, since this was the first Christmas ever, none of these people had long-standing traditions that they felt they needed to uphold. But the point is a critical one. Jesus Christ, Son of God and Savior of the world, breaks into our world not because the world is organized and peaceful, but precisely because it is chaotic and frenzied. The creator of all that exists lays in the manger not because God's people had finally proven themselves worthy, but because God's love is without limit or condition. God's gift of salvation and hope comes to us not because we have created the perfect holiday spirit blazing with light, but precisely because of the darkness that so often fills our world. In a land of deep darkness, the light shines. The light of Christ and the darkness cannot overcome that.
Please rise. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and of rejoicing. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, to fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of the nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world at rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The angels sing peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of the war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Hear us, O hear us, oh God. Mercy Mary. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and those without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. We look before you people or situations of special need, either aloud or silently at this time. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Love sings to the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and expectant parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and every size with your love and care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The heavenly chorus sings glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks 
for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. Let us join them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another and with horns in the parking lot. We continue with the offering. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessing for others. With the trees of the field, with all the earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary 
that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God, who comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending proclamation. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O oh God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile into the future. We bless you, O oh God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O oh God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in this gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The word is revealed in a manger, in simple bread and wine. Come. Meet Christ in this meal.
This time I invite you to peel the top cover, the mostly clear one back from the wafer. Receive the body of Christ broken for you. Now peel back the foil portion. This is the blood of Christ shed for us all. Those who are able, please rise. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, newly born this night, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Radiant God, with our eyes, we have seen your salvation. And in this meal, we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So we continue with the uh, candle lighting portion. Um, again, you want to take either a... Uh, you're welcome to try to take a candle. I would suggest the, uh, the glow sticks tonight. I think the wind is still out there pretty good. Um, and uh, we will gather out either on the sidewalk or the edge of the parking lot and uh, conclude our service there.